Good evening. Thank you for being here tonight. I just had an epiphany while Laura was doing her invocation. The title of my talk tonight is Letting Go as Spiritual Practice. And that's what I'm feeling that I need to do in this moment right now. So I'm going to move this to the side. <clears throat> because I was trying to make a talk with my intellect today and it wasn't working. So I'm going to let that go and we'll see what happens. So I chose the title Letting Go as Spiritual Practice because this past weekend Lester and I took our daughter up to Reno to go to college. And so we now have no children left at home for the past four days. So I have been feeling this... Um, Awareness kind of feels like background music for the last year, knowing that our baby was going to be leaving home this month. And so it wasn't, um, you know, it would come and go. But I was aware that she was in the 12th grade. It was her last year. As soon as she was done, she was going to be leaving. And so I was more mindful, more aware this year as we were moving through this year. So I've been thinking a lot about letting go and um, observing it in myself and what it really means kind of in big ways and small ways. And I think in my own life there have been really obvious times, very obvious times when I was letting go or needed to let go in order to keep moving forward. And I think all of us experience that. Those times might be when our children leave home, when our parents get sick, or our parents die, or someone that we love dies, when we lose a job, when we move from one place to another, those are clearly life experiences where we're called to let go. We're called to. And I think a lot about what Michael Beckwith says, because it impacted my spiritual path for years and years, and what he says is that if I'm already it spiritually, if I'm already it and there's nothing I can add to myself to make myself more whole, more complete, more divine, more spiritual. I'm created in the image and likeness of God. What exactly am I going to add to myself that's going to make me more spiritual? Nothing. So 100%, 100% of spiritual growth is about letting go. Just think about that for a minute. Because it affects how I live my life. Do I get up in the morning thinking I need to add something to myself to make myself okay? Or do I get up in the morning knowing that this day is an opportunity each and every moment to let go, to let go, to let go, to let go, to surrender? Like Lynn just sang, to surrender. So sometimes the big events in our life are very obvious that we need to let go of certain things in order to move on and have peace. But I think it's the more subtle things, the day-to-day -day things that we're faced with over and over and over again that are our greater opportunity in some ways because that's the, hmm, like the golden thread of our life that's running through every single day. And so in order, so I have the opportunity to be more mindful about what it is I have the opportunity to let go of. Things like judgment of myself and of other people. Control. I have an opportunity to let go of control every day, every moment, in fact. I have an opportunity to let go of my expectations, my attachments, my resentments, 
my anger, my sense of separation from God, my fear. Every day I have an opportunity to let go of fear because all those things that I just mentioned stem from fear. They're all fear-based, all of them. And so if I'm willing to let go of my fear, I can be free. And I read this week in this wonderful book called Love is Letting Go of Fear by Gerald Jampolsky that healing can be seen as letting go of fear. So I've been sitting with that for a few days too. Because sometimes I think I wonder, we may wonder, what does healing look like? You know, I think healing, you know, I, I have in my mind what a healing looks like. And if it doesn't show up that way, I think one hasn't taken place. Well, Ernest Holmes would tell us that a healing is a revealing of the spiritual truth. And Gerald Jampolsky was telling me that healing is letting go of fear. So when I think about it in my life, when I'm faced with anything, anything, whether it's my child leaving home, the uncertainty of my future, my financial situation, my health, it doesn't matter what it is that I may be concerned with, if I can let go of the fear surrounding that, I'm free. I'm free in that moment as soon as I let go of fear. Because love and fear cannot simultaneously exist in the same moment. It's one or the other all the time. They both aren't happening at the same time. And so if I'm willing to let go of fear, if I'm willing to let go of fear, then I can experience the love that is, that is my essence, that is who I am, that is the nature of the universe, that is present all the time, every moment but I don't experience it as myself and in other people and as the energy of the universe when I'm operating from fear. So how do I let go of fear and what is fear? I think that we may all have an idea of how we want life to be, and we try very hard to make it that way, and we're afraid of what will happen if it doesn't go that way. And so we try to control things. We try to control things because we don't trust life. I know I try to control things because at times I'm not trusting life. And why do I think that I even need to control things and that life isn't perfect just the way that it's unfolding? But because I have fears inside me, I have a choice of acknowledging that I have fear and being willing to let it go or kind of denying that fear and spending my life trying to avoid it. So I can live this life day after day of making choices and responding to things in defended and protected ways because I don't want to experience my fear. I'm trying to avoid it. And so I'm acting every day in my life in a way to avoid fear to avoid experiencing the fear that I have inside me. I think we are all doing that at some level. I know I'm doing it. That there are choices that I make and ways that I behave and ways that I respond to things in order to try to keep my fear at bay. What if I were willing to just experience it? What if I stopped trying to control everything and, and stop myself from experiencing fear. We can actually live our whole lives doing that, trying to just stop ourselves from experiencing fear. What if I were just willing to experience it?
because the energy that I'm taking to try to control my life and not experience my fear is not allowing me to live the life that I'm meant to live. And if I'm willing to experience my fear, my willingness, my willingness to experience it is also the key to freedom. Because when I allow myself to experience the fear that I have inside myself, then I release it. And when I release it, it's no longer activated. So the next time that I come into a situation where that fear may have previously been activated, if I've allowed myself to experience it three days ago and let it come up and, and, and release it, then it's not going to be as powerful tomorrow or the next day or the next day. So my willingness to experience it not only frees me from living this false life of spending all my time trying to st stop myself from feeling afraid, to living in the moment presently, allowing myself to experience what is. And when I do that, I actually free myself and allow myself to experience the love that's present in the moment. And my life starts to take on a different feeling. So there is this phenomenal book called The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. It's phenomenal. And in that book, he has a chapter that's called Let Go or Fall. Let Go or Fall. And what he talks about in that chapter is As a spiritual being, I am pure consciousness. I am the one who sees. So everything in my life can be changing every moment, that everything out here is always temporary and always changing. But the I that I am is the observer of that. I am not that. It's like the I that I am, my pure consciousness, is the subject of my life. That is the subject. And the object is whatever's happening out here. So an example of this might be if I asked you, okay, Jamie, which one of these are you? Are you this microphone? Are you this podium? Or are you these flowers? You're going to say, well, I'm none of those. Well, who are you? You're the one who's seeing the microphone, the podium, and the flowers. That's what our life is like. I'm the one who's seeing. The I that I am, that pure consciousness, is the one who is observing my life. I am not this. I'm not this. I am the one who sees. And so in my life, when fear comes up, a fearful thought comes up, I can become absorbed by that. It comes up, and I have a fear about my child leaving home, okay? That stirs up some fear in me, some emotions in me. And I can observe that as simply a thought, as simply an emotion, because thoughts and emotions are things that the I that I am, as the observer, experiences. They're not who I am. But if I get absorbed by that thought, oh my God, my kid's leaving home, just like that, I can forget that I'm the one who sees, and I can become the thoughts and the feelings. I can become that which I'm experiencing, if that makes sense. I become it. So I get absorbed in it, and it can happen instantaneously. So all of a sudden, now I'm in a place of, uh-oh, what's it going to be like without her? And can go down this whole road of, What's our life going to be like? And then we'll have some aging come into that. That's a really good fear-producing thing. Um, um, you know, is she going to be safe where she is? What if she's walking around a campus all night by herself? And, you know, what if Lester and I don't know what to do with ourselves, sitting in the house looking at each other? Uh, hi there. <laughs> hi. Um, but, you, but this is just an example of one thought can take me all over the place, and all of a sudden, 
I'm no longer the observer. I'm in that experience, and I'm feeling the anxiety, and I'm feeling the fear, and I'm feeling the uncertainty, and all of a sudden, I'm not present anymore. I've, I've lost myself, self with a capital S. I've lost myself, and I become absorbed in all of these thoughts. And so then I start reacting and making choices and doing things based on that because I'm not stepping back and observing it anymore. We are afraid of feeling fear. And so we avoid it. If I'm willing to allow myself to experience it, it will set me free. So if I can stay grounded in the seat of consciousness, which means if I can stay grounded as much as possible in the awareness that I am the one who sees, and any thought and any emotion that I have is like a cloud floating through a clear blue sky. And it's okay for me to just observe it coming up and passing through. And when I allow that to happen, I will find that when these fearful thoughts come up and I notice them, if I allow them to come up and let them pass, they will pass. But if I get absorbed in them, I can get lost there. And sometimes we get lost for a few minutes. Sometimes we get lost for a few hours. Sometimes we get lost for a few days. Sometimes we can get lost for an entire lifetime where we're no longer awake. We're unconscious because we have been absorbed by, consumed by, this fear that we are experiencing. So for example, let's say that I were highly identified as a mother, and that's what my whole life had been about, and I was really focused on that. When my kid leaves home, I'm screwed. <laughs> because that's who I think I am. And so then I can spend the rest of my life feeling sad that I'm not a mother anymore and that I can't do that anymore and I don't know who I am anymore and I don't really know what to do. And, but pick something. It can be anything. A relationship that we are in with someone that we love ends and I'm not willing to let go of it. And then I start judging that there's something wrong with me that it ended. And so then I start this self-loathing and criticism of myself and I get in there and then blaming the other person for how unhappy I am. And it can be this whole big drama that I'm living my life by. And I can live a long time like that. And it can happen really quickly where something comes up and we're absorbed by it and we lose ourselves. So our opportunity in letting go Letting go is a moment-by-moment -moment practice. It's a daily practice, moment-by-moment. -moment. And how do I know when to do it? The moment that I feel an inner disturbance, that's when. The moment that I feel my energy change inside myself, the moment I feel that, that's the point of spiritual growth. That's the point of choice right there. Because in that moment, when I'm aware of my energy changing, that's the... That's the moment of choice. And I can very quickly be swept away with the thoughts and emotions of what's coming up, or I can step back, remain the observer, and remember that I'm the one who sees, and that that which is coming up is simply like a cloud in the sky. It's an object. It's like the flowers, the microphone, or the podium. It's not who I am. I'm just the observer of it. And when I can allow that to come up and pass through me, it does pass. And then guess what? As I keep practicing that, I really am letting go of those fears that are inside me, that have been blocking me from living a life that's totally present in the moment. Because the minute I'm absorbed by my thoughts, my fearful thoughts, I'm not present anymore. And I'm not living as love and in the presence of God anymore in that moment.
So each day, as I'm moving through my day, when I feel that shift in energy, when I feel a change inside myself, because I could be going along and I'm feeling peaceful and fine and happy, and something happens that creates a disturbance inside me. When that happens, it's like something, some issue that I have, some blockage that I have inside myself that may have been there for years has been hit. That's what's happened. When I feel an inner disturbance, it's because something inside of me has been hit. It's been activated. And I can be swept away by it, and then that, and be swept away by it, and swept away by it, and then that can continue for years and years and years. Or I can really become mindful and say, okay, as soon as I notice this disturbance, I am going to allow it to come up and pass through me. And as I do, I release that. And so what's interesting about that is that I don't need to, and again, I'm not saying that there isn't value in this. And, you know, Michael Singer would say, that's the beginning and end of the path. When the disturbance comes up, stay open. Stay open. Relax your heart. And let the fear come up and go through. And then it will pass and you carry on. And if we continue doing that, we're releasing all these blockages that are inside of us without ever having to actually know specifically what they are. I don't need to dig them all up. The ups and downs of my life and that which disturbs me are, that is my spiritual path. It's in a way that's simple. I just get up every day and I'm moving through my life, but, but I'm moving through it with a commitment to experience peace. My commitment is to experience peace. And so in those moments when I feel the inner disturbance, I have the choice of experiencing peace or not. And so if my intention every day when I wake up is to experience peace, then I'm mindful. Just as I'm moving through my day, I pay attention. And when I feel those inner disturbances, I allow them to come up and to let go. I let go of them. And as I do that, I'm letting go of all these blockages that are inside me. I'm freeing up this energy that allows me to be more present in the moment. And so I'll give you an example. It seems kind of simple. But let's say that I'm at work and I go to reach for my pencil and it's gone. Because my coworker's taken my pencil again. Now, I'm talking about this is simple, but we all experience this. Well, then I have this stuff come up. I have this stuff come up. I'm bugged. I'm bugged that that person's taken my pencil. And I feel an inner disturbance in that moment. So right then in that moment, I can say, that bugger, I can't believe they took my pencil again. And you know what? I think they're, prob you know what? they're probably taking other stuff from my desk too. And you know what? They don't even work that hard. And I have to do most of the work. And they don't even get here on time. So when are they even taking my pencils? Oh, because they have to stay late to get their work done because they don't get here on time, and so that's why they have to take my... Do you see, where, like, see how fast it happens? Because someone took a pencil. So apply it to your life. You know, the pencil analogy to your life. But if I come think, where's my pencil? Oh, my pencil. Where's my pencil? I'm feeling an inner disturbance. And so I can just close my eyes for a moment and just allow myself to let it come up and pass. But it's a conscious choice that I make, and it's mindful. I'm doing it purposefully. And there are things, like Michael Singer would say, you know, the seat of consciousness is up here. It's this higher elevation of consciousness. He said, so keep looking up. Even visually, if I look up, if I'm sitting there and I look up, I'm looking up to this higher consciousness that is the one who sees. And I see that this thought about the pencil is just a thought that's passing by. It does not determine who I am and my future and my relationship with my coworker and my whole life's not tied up in it. But it can get that way pretty quickly if I'm not mindful. So in that moment, literally he says, look up, look up and relax my heart. So I keep my heart open so that those feelings, that disturbance can come up and be released and it will pass, and then I can get back to work, and I don't need to think about it, I don't need to worry about it, and whatever. Now, 
Does that mean that I don't deal with things in my life? No. I mean, if the pencil situation keeps happening, the next thing I know they're stealing, you know, my extra pair of shoes from under my desk or whatever, you know, I may need to have a conversation. However, it's really about the spiritual practice of letting go, which is being mindful in the moment of what disturbs me when I've been disturbed and allowing whatever that is, because that's a blockage in me. It's really running me. It's running me unconsciously. And if I can allow it to come up and move through me, then I release it and I'm free. And that's the way to freedom. And so we might start with the pencil situation. Start with simpler situations. It's like flexing muscles. And then we'll find that it's easier over time to stay in that seat of consciousness where I am the observer where I am the one who sees and I'm not absorbed by what's happening out here and identifying myself with that being who I am and acting in all kinds of crazy ways in order to avoid feeling my own fear. We can live our whole lives that way. When I told Dana that I'd picked this title, Letting Go, because that seemed appropriate because she was leaving for college and I didn't know what my experience would be like and what I'd have to talk about, and she says, oh, well then I better say a few clever things so that you can reference me in your talk. <laughs> so that was one. Um, and, and honestly, I was just thinking this, that what we drove up there together and laughed the whole way and we laughed a lot during the weekend and there were so many times during the weekend that I thought, I wish I had a notebook to write down the stuff this kid says because it's so funny and it's so prolific that I can't remember it all. But here's what I can tell you about the experience with Dana going off to college. I'm practicing what I'm preaching. You know, the feelings come up about her being gone or they were coming up about her leaving and saying goodbye and you know, to just let them come up and pass. And what I found was that they do come up and pass. They do come up and pass. And in my allowing that, I'm feeling, um, and Lester and I were talking about this, feeling, I don't know, it doesn't seem as hard maybe as I thought it would be. And, you know, that's a good thing. And, and it doesn't mean that we haven't shed tears and you know, the other night something happened and... I, my heart kind of broke open and I felt all this emotion and I had a good cry. And that's, but that's keeping my heart open and letting it come out. I didn't think, oh, I don't want to cry. I better go over here and do something so I don't experience that, you know, because I'm afraid of that emotion. No, it's I felt it, I allowed myself to cry, it passed, and I'm good. And that might happen again and again and again. But it's happening to us all the time, every day, in every time we feel a disturbance of our inner peace. And so I invite you to become really mindful. Become mindful of how you feel inside. Because that's your guide to freeing yourself and to experiencing spiritual growth. Is the minute I feel a disturbance. So when I feel disturbances in life, it's not like, oh, crap, here we go again. Right? Sometimes you're like, oh, you know. That's, that's, that's my spiritual path. So I can welcome it. Every time I feel a disturbance, I'm like, wow, here's an this is an opportunity. Right now in this moment for you to let go. And Michael Singer would say, the moment you feel that disturbance, let go right away. Let go right away. Because if I don't, and we know how fast it can happen with the pencil scenario, I'm absorbed in it. And then it becomes a lot harder to let it go. Sometimes a year can pass and we haven't let it go. Really, that can happen. So being mindful of those disturbances and welcoming them because I know that my spiritual path isn't about adding something to myself, making myself something more. I'm already it. It's about letting go. It's 100% about letting go. So if I wake up in the morning and I know it's about letting go, when I experience those disturbances, that's the universe supporting me in letting go. The stuff's coming up in order for me to allow it to come up and pass through me and be released. And then I'm free of it. And if I continue doing that, eventually over time, fewer things are going to come up. 
because there are fewer blockages inside me. There are fewer things that I'm resisting because just in the practice of letting go and letting go and letting go, I'm freeing myself and it becomes easier over time. So I invite you to remember that you're already it and that our spiritual path is about letting go. And what's before you in your life as a challenge is your opportunity to let go in that moment, each and every moment. And when we do that, we move from fear and back into love, which is our natural state where peace is, where freedom is, and where the spaciousness is for kind of the infinite possibility of love and creativity of the universe. Because I'm not living in fear. Because I like what Gerald Jampolsky said, that healing is letting go of fear. And each of us has the opportunity to heal ourselves moment by moment, day after day. That is our spiritual path. Namaste. So I invite you just to close your eyes for a moment. And I invite you just to contemplate, just contemplate what it feels like to be free of fear. To just contemplate that. If I had no fear, what would my life feel like? What would my inner experience be like? How would I be in the world? I invite you just to sit with that for a few moments in the silence.
So in the silence, I'm grateful for the opportunity to remember the truth of my being, that I am love, that love is the only activity in my life, the only power, the only essence, the only energy. It's the I that I am. And I know that as I rest in the awareness of who I am and know that I am the one who sees, I live as love and I am free. And so in this moment, I'm willing to allow my life to serve the evolution of my soul. I'm willing to pay attention to that which disturbs me so that I can allow that which no longer serves me to come up and be released. It's really a simple path, one that takes conscious awareness and conscious intention. And in this moment, I'm willing to give that attention, to give that conscious awareness to my unfolding, to the ongoing realization of that which I am. For I know that it is my divine birthright to live in love and as love and in freedom and as freedom, for that is the truth of my being. And so I claim that right here and right now and know that the path to my unfolding is always revealed to me through my life experience and I don't resist it. I allow myself to experience it, to let it go, to set it free and always come back to that love. And that creates more love and more peace and more joy. And it expands and it expands and it expands. And that is the nature of life. And so I give thanks for it. I give thanks that this is the way that it is. I give thanks for my willingness to embrace it and to do that which I'm called to do in order to experience that which I came to be. And so I simply give thanks in this moment for the clarity, for being conscious, for being awake, for knowing that I have a choice and for exercising that choice, knowing that each and every moment my life is an opportunity to let go and to live in love and as love. And so it is. And so now it's time for our tithes and offerings. So while our ushers are coming forward, I invite you to prepare that which you are going to give. And to really give from a place of fearlessness. To just give from a place of fearlessness, remembering who you really are and the nature of the universe and that this entire universe is conspiring for your good. That abundance is the nature of the universe and you are that. And so each of us in this moment gives from this place of fearlessness this place of love, of knowing the truth, and knowing that that which we give is multiplied because it comes from this place of fearlessness and freedom and love. And we send it out into the universe and bless it, knowing that it blesses everyone that it comes in contact with. And so we simply give thanks for that which we have to give and give thanks for the freedom from which we give it. And so it is. You may know this one. There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all by myself Didn't know the grace of God was sufficient Didn't know the love of God was at hand But now I can say if you are discouraged Struggling just to make it through another day You've got to let it go Just 
just let it go And this is what you have to say Ready? I release and I let go I let the spirit run my life And my heart is open wide Yes, I'm only here for God No more struggle, no more strife With my faith I see the light I am free in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for God Let's hear you I let the spirit run my life and my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. Woo! No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm Lynn. Okay, so there are practitioners available for prayer in the prayer room after service. The bookstore is open. There are CDs available of this service in the bookstore if uh, you're interested in that. <sighs> when we remember who we are, and that is the one who sees. And I can stay in that consciousness and allow that which comes up to come up and pass like a cloud floating by the sky. Then I'm free and I'm living in the I that I am. And so I invite all of us, myself included, to stop letting fear run me by doing my best to stay awake and the moment I feel disturbance inside, stop, be quiet, open my heart up, look up, stay in that high place of consciousness where I know that I'm not that, I'm just the observer of it, and let it pass and experience greater freedom. It's a possibility for all of us every day. Namaste. one way to do that.
Good night, everyone.